Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 journeyman story, the head coach with me, Daniel. Combined with the director of Football Challenge, we're back for part 17 today. And we've got our first game in charge of our Broth, our second club of the series, and we make our bow with them today. Certainly in a competitive era anyway. And we'll be hoping against a championship side in Wraith Rovers, it won't all go wrong. So if you're looking forward to all of that, please do put a big thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from this story and our Builder Nation with Bangor. The two stories rotate every day at half three and we've got twice a week live streams as well from Dundee United. So please do subscribe, turn that notification bell on and you'll get alerts as all of that happens. But firstly, if you did miss the last episode where we of course joined our broth and introduced all the players we're going to be working with, please do click in the eye above. You can catch up with the last episode. And there's a link to all the other playlists and our podcast series too. So please do give those a try. It really does help out. But let's go and talk about our broth today. We've got our first game in charge against Wraith. We've got a little bit of transfer news, but we've actually got a few more worries than anything. So there's worries on two fronts. Firstly, in terms of the players that have come in. And then secondly, our usual worry at this stage of the head coach, the lack of players coming in. Now we know that will happen later in the window. We're not expecting much from this sort of round. We've got Cove Rangers in our division, Rafe in the championship, Aberdeen are in the premiership. It's only really Kelty Hearts we're favourites against. But I am still a little concerned. So let's start by having a look at the staffing because that's of course the most important thing. We've got a director of football, we've now got an assistant manager, and we're getting a little bit closer to having a backroom team that we'd like. So the man that came in first was Russell Ireland, a director of football who is nowhere near as good as Pat Nevin, and that is my first concern. He's got less than one star reputation, he's on £325 a week, his judgement for ability is five, Pat's was eight. He's not quite as adept, he's a fickle personality, he's not as good a negotiator, I've got a feeling we're going to regret not having Pat here. I wish, I wish our chairman had found him and brought him along with us. Because that would have been the dream team back in charge. But as it is, Russell Island has brought in an assistant manager. That in the form of Chris Erskine. He's a 35-year-old, former Leighton Orient player. Formerly of Livingston, Partick, Dundee United. Partick again prior to that. But most importantly for us, he's okay mentally. He's a solid man. He's got decent judgment. He's a terrible coach though, and that's the worry because with the limited spaces you get at this level, you can't really afford to waste them. And I'm not sure he's going to be the best option for us. So I'm already looking at this and thinking, yes, the players were a big step up, but our director of football is now worst. Our assistant manager isn't as good either. Do we have to think maybe we've made a mistake? I mean, we'll wait and see. But if we have a look at the transfers, there has been a little bit of action on the pitch. There's an offer going in for a free agent for a 33-year-old Callum Higginbottom. And this leads to my next concern. Not so much in the case of Higginbottom. He'll be a decent squad player. But in terms of the ones that have already come in. Now the reason I'm concerned is that these players are a huge step down from the ones that are already at the club. It's like our director of football is working as if he was managing Brecon in League 2. And we're working as a top League 1 club. So the two players he's brought in are Ross Graham, a two and a half star defender with four and a half potential, admittedly. Not strong, can't position himself, can't tackle, no composure. Not what we wanted. And compared to some of the players we were meeting last episode, the likes of O'Brien at centre half, he's rubbish. I mean, I'm sure he's a lovely lad and he'll be a good player for us eventually. He's played at this level for Cove Rangers, but he's had a year of basically not playing football in Dundee United youth team. In fact, we'll have to check if he's there in a live stream save now. But he's not good enough. He really isn't for what we want to do at the moment. This is a short-term fix. He might be a really good player long-term. But the personality doesn't bode well. The lack of determination doesn't. And when I saw that, I sort of went, uh-oh, I hope that's just a sort of youth signing to be a backup. But then we signed Jamie Andrews. A 19-year-old central midfielder. One and a half star ability. Two and a half potential. And at that point, my alarm bell started ringing because those two, mixed with Higginbottom, who's at the other end of the age spectrum, but not really a huge amount better, perhaps two and a half star would be a backup. I'm starting to think that the director of football is not going to improve our first 11. And considering we've got two or three holes in the squad, that's a concern for me. There was also one other that came in before this season ticked over. That man was Edward Jones. 
So he joined from Stoke on a free agent deal. And again, very similar. Two-star ability, three-star potential. And he is our first choice right back now because we didn't have one at the club. But he's not good enough. He's sort of breaking level, to be brutally honest. He's the level of our breaking side. And he's only listed as a breakthrough prospect. So my hope here is that we haven't yet got a right back in the squad that's listed as a first team player. A regular starter, important player, whatever. Even a squad player. So I'm hoping he'll still be in the market for another. But will it come in time for the league season? That's the big question. So I'm actually going to have to promote Jamie Andrews to the senior squad. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm just going to check there's not any others sitting in the reserves. Just Scott Callagher, the third choice keeper, who hasn't left the club yet despite being transfer listed. But I'm a little bit concerned, so let me know what you think of that. But considering the players we introduced last time and the ones in our squad, if all of the signings are like this, it's going to be a massive downgrade. I just want to very quickly, before we get into our game, compare how that goes to Breakin's window. I'd just like to see what they've done. They've appointed Lee Andrews as manager. Formerly the reserves manager, was at Workington before. He's alright. But let's have a look at what they've been doing in the window. Well, not a lot, seems the simple answer. Have they got any before it ticked over? Ah, oh, one. Gareth Roger. He is a centre-half at 28. He's not great. But he's probably not much worse than Graham, which is where the worry is for me. So I'm hoping we'll be able to stay above squads like that. I'd be interested to see if he actually goes and looks at any of the breaking players, like a Russell Dingwall. He's someone who could potentially benefit our squad as a backup player. But we'll wait and see. He has been scouted by the looks of it because two-star ability there. But let's leave Breakin for now and get back to our broth because we have got a good support already, a good team cohesion in place and a fairly settled squad. Albeit a small one. We started last season with Breakin with 13 senior players. We start today against Wraith, a championship side in the League Cup. With 14 players, 15 if we include the reserve Jamie Andrews, but we've got three spaces on the bench and we just can't fill it. It's really quite a concern. We've got no left winger in the squad whatsoever, so Kirkpatrick, the backup fourth choice centre mid, is going out there. We have got Edward Jones in at right back, but it's far less than ideal. I thought about going Stuart right back, Craig and right mid, but it didn't make enough of a difference quality wise. And then Josh Rennie up front is probably a backup at best, but for today, He's going to be a starter for us. We're sticking to a very similar tactic to what was very effective at Breakin. We have got quite a bit of experience in the squad, so I'm hoping that will be helpful. But without match fitness and without substitutions available, I don't know that we're going to make an impact in the cup. So I wanted to show you the first competitive game, and we will go through it here against Wraith. But I think the real proof in the pudding for what we're going to achieve this season will probably not come till the first league game now. So apologies for all the Christmas stuff in the background. I'm recording this, believe it or not, on the 29th of November. But my other half has decided that Christmas decorations are going up early. So who am I to argue? But let me take you through our 11 quickly for today. It's Kieran Wright, the undoubted first choice in goal. Edward Jones, the new right back. Comerford alongside O'Brien at centre half. Hamilton over at left back. Comerford, again, a Dundee United youngster in real life. He's popped up in our live stream save. On the right of midfield, it's Stuart. On the left-hand side, it's the centre mid, Kirkpatrick. He'll do a job for a one-off day. And then Barhanas alongside Watley in centre mid with Rennie and Whiten up front. So we're just going to cross our fingers and hope something happens. Hopefully by the second game, we'll have Callum Higginbottom available on the bench and a couple more in the squad coming in. But it isn't happening at the moment. Our director of football's working slowly and we're going to have to make do with a 15-man squad. Into the game we go, it's our bro 3 Wraith Rovers, and let me know in the comments how you think we'll get on. So a very sad looking bench, as the full seven listed for Wraith, we're in a little bit of trouble. Some decent players in that squad, we'll see how they get on. Not many household names I wouldn't say, but we'll give it a go. We're going to pump the fist, we're going to go out there and impress us, and hopefully with them on board with us already, we'll be alright. But take you through the tactics very quickly. We've got Watley in there as a Carrillero and Barhanat as a deep line playmaker. I don't want too many too far up the pitch, basically. Two strikers up top, advance forward and poach up, which works so well over at Breakin and with Cliftonville last year too. And the idea is early crosses, whip them in and let's get the ball wide to these midfielders and into the box to this front too. Whether that will work without a left winger yet, I'm not quite sure. But there's only one way to find out. Into our first competitive game, into the first half. We played good English sides in friendlies already and been battered. So let's hope the same doesn't happen today. 
An early doors, we're defending a corner here. Right hand side, out swinger in. And Brad Mackay heads in for 1 0. A very good player, but basically unmarked eight yards out. Not the best start for us, our broth trail. And we've got a goal kick here with Wright. Long downfield towards Rennie up top. He's brought it down quite well there. Back to Watley. Chance to go into Barhanas to Whiten. We needed heroics, but he's been dispossessed. And he's up to Ben, the centre forward. Holds it up for Rafe. Turns his man. And he's going on a run here. Sure, it's from miles out. It's very confident. But it was nowhere near the goal. Still none nil. And we've got a free kick with Barhanas. Into the front post. Vaughan heads away. Joseph chases, but Hamilton gets there first. He's got one down the line. That's Kirkpatrick. Not naturally a winger, as we've discussed. But if he can get it in the box, we won't mind. Back to O'Brien. Up to Kirkpatrick. Chance to cross here. Can he get it in? He's blocked back to Barhanas. Hamilton does deliver, though. Headed away as far as Coulson. And it's all Rafe on the counter. They look so comfortable dealing with the crosses. And here they come down the left wing. Coulson switches it. Barhanas down. Comerford hoofs clear. And to be honest, we're playing really long, which is against our tactics. And we haven't got a big man up front to hold it up. Armstrong shots wide, but Rafe looked dominant. And we're not quite on board with the tactical instructions yet. So we've reached half time. And to be honest, it's a pretty poor display against a side who are better than us. We've seen why Albrove got relegated last year. And we've seen why we need more additions to the squad. The weaknesses in certain areas show. The weakness from set pieces show. We have had one shot on target which we haven't seen. But it is fair to say that Rafe have been dominant. More worryingly, a few of these lads are looking a bit anxious. We've got most of them back on board motivated now. But when it's our team leaders and our senior pros who are anxious about Wraith, that worries me as well. Is it a mentality issue? Look at how unhappy Jones is at right back because we haven't got a first teamer in. It is unfair he's having to play in this game. As this time we do head a corner up. Coulson gets back though and puts the rebound in. And we've got instructions on to close him down. So that's more of a worry. But two goals coming from set pieces. We look really weak defensively. And we are going to have to make changes just to rest a few. And just to hopefully try and keep this respectable. So we've not really got much choice in where those changes will be. What I am going to do is drop Stewart to right back. Take Jones off and bring Cragen on right mid. Just because that's the best we can do there. On the left, oh I don't know. Hamilton can just about play left mid. Graham can just about play left back. Do I go for that option? Do I put Whiten out wide but I've got no strikers? I just don't know. So Jamie Andrews will come on for... Barhanas, and he will be, what's he best at? Deep line playmaker's fine. Ross Graham, I'm not sure there's much to gain from bringing him on, but we will do anyway. He'll replace Hamilton, but we'll leave it 10 minutes. So let's get to the last 15. We'll make the third sub, but you can see the weakness of the squad here. The three or four positions that are exposed, we've nearly conceded a third from a corner. A massive chance there for Rafe, and they put it wide. But we need strength in depth. We just have not got the quality across the squad. Ross Graham will come on. We'll get the debuts out the way. And 2-0, given the circumstances, not a bad result. We need a right back desperately. You can see from Kirkpatrick's performance, we need a left winger desperately. And at that point, if we can get Rennie up front replaced as well, I don't think we've got a bad squad. But we are just missing a few as Vaughan's got the ball on the right. Corner kick in. It's headed against the bar. And there is going to be a lot of work on defending set pieces because that has been my biggest worry today. 20 shots for Rafe, 9 on target. We do keep it to 2-0. But my word, we're 14 players in the squad. Don't they desperately need a bit of help? There we go then. It looks like with Aberdeen beating Cove Rangers, it's probably us battling with them for third. I think Kelty Hearts are going to finish bottom. There's no doubt about that. And I'll say that before we play them, of course. And then Rafe and Aberdeen competing at the top. So three mini leagues there, should we say. But not the best start. Rafe dominated the match. The performance, probably the biggest concern. With Breakin, we did well at shutting up shop against teams. But here, not the case. So let's go and deal with the press conference. I'm not sure when the next game is. It's against Cove Rangers in four days. So we might not be able to have time to play that one. But let's skip ahead and see if we've got any help in the squad. Well, it's just about coming time for the game. So I'm hoping we might even get an offer for our next player before Cove Rangers that I can show you today. So Callum Higginbottom has agreed to join the club. He's a 33-year-old winger. He's agreed as an impact sub on 275 quid a week, which isn't bad. So let's see how he's rated. It's only a one-year deal, which is good for an older player. Two and a half ability. So let's register him for the squad. That's the most important bit. I'm going to have to chuck all the others in now as well. 
and let's see how he ranks compared to some of the others. What it does mean, of course, I can play off the left wing too. He can play off the left wing, he can play up front as an advanced forward or poacher, and he can play off the right. So potentially today, we could start him and drop Stewart to right back. But ideally, I'd like him to be a backup player and nothing else, because I don't think he's good enough otherwise. He's played for Kelty Hearts, he's played for Real Kashmir, David Robertson, the manager over there, brilliant BBC Scotland documentary. And we've spoken to him over on the podcast too. He's a hilarious man, former Aberdeen player, played for Leeds, Scotland. He's brilliant. I'll put the interview in the eye above, but definitely worth a watch. He's a brilliant guy. Dunfermaline, Kilmarnock, Motherwell before that, Carlisle. He's got good experience. He's just passed his peak. If it wasn't for that, it'd be a brilliant signing. So we're going to ask him to be welcomed. That's gone well enough. So let's see if we get another offer before this evening's game. We reach Wednesday's game against Cove Rangers and absolutely nothing has happened. A really disappointing start for us. Brecon did lose their first game against St Johnston incidentally. But it's not looking great for us. So before we finish off today, let's go and have a look at the dynamics. Because the club atmosphere is average and we've got an awful lot of work to do. We need to get some senior players in. And he's just not there. I mean, Higginbottom's gone into the influential players. But it's really not a great deal in the grand scheme of things. And as we stand, looking at the report for a club like this. I mean, they're putting Whiten on the left wing because there's no one else. But I can't put our best striker out there. Look at the lack of depth behind Whiten up front. Look at the nobody on the left wing that can play there. Higginbottom's actually rated the best now. So we might give him a go there off camera. In midfield, we're all right, but the best one is Tam O'Brien, and he's a centre-half. And then again, behind him at centre-back, there's no quality. The next best is Hamilton, a left-back. It just it's, it's really thin on the ground. And I know that traditionally, if you look at last year with Breakin, if you look at FM20, in the windows, generally, the best work gets done late on. But I'm really worried about where we are. If we go and have a look at the club itself and the scout reports, they're scouting good players, and they're scouting plenty of them. So I'm not quite sure why there's no action. I mean, I can see loads of players that would benefit our squad there. Players that I've heard of. Players that can help. And there's just nothing being done. So it's a very frustrating time for us. There's still 400 grand of transfer budget. There's still two grand of wage budget. But we've got a worse director of football. And we are going to miss this man so, so much. Let's go and have a look at Pat Nevin. Because he's still there at Breakin. He's still going to be doing wonders. And what I would do to have him back as my right hand man. We can't do it. It's the beauty of the head coach. You get a great director of football, you choose to move clubs, and then you get an awful one. I don't want to rule our one out just yet, but the early signs are very worrying. And Pat Nevin is going to be the biggest miss we've ever had in this series, I think. I'm already at the stage where I'm starting to think, have we made a mistake? Perhaps have we? If we look at the season preview, we're still expected to be third, even with our limited squad. Breaking favourites to go down, but we've heard that story before. And Queen of the South expected to finish above us. Today's opponents, Cove Rangers, they're down in fifth in the pre-season expectations. So it's going to be an interesting game, this one. I'm going to play it off camera. I'm going to get through the last two in the group stages as well. I very much doubt we'll be getting through. And then look what the first two league games are that we're going to be back for. Four far at home. Should be a home banker if we're hoping to be near the top of the table. And then we go back to Breakin. Our second league game of the season is away at our old club. And of course we're going to be back for that. Of course we're going to show it. So we will show those two games for Far and Breaking City. Our first two league games in charge of our growth. But early on, the signs both on the pitch and off it in a transfer window are very concerning. I'm really worried about the director of football. And I'm really worried about the rest of this window. So let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen. What you thought of the first performance. If you did enjoy this episode and seeing a bit of struggle, please do put a thumbs up on the video. It's not all success here in the head coach. And to be fair, I know a few of you like that. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one. If you haven't already, please do subscribe down below. Turn that notification bell on too. You'll get alerts as daily episodes release from this series and from our Bangor City one as well. That's every day at 3.30. And then we've got two weekly live streams with Dundee United. As the focus stays in Scotland for that one, you guys voted for it and that's what we're doing. Sunday mornings at 10.30, Tuesday afternoons at 5.30. Please do come along and join in the fun. We've got a great little community down in the chat.
Finally, as I mentioned, you can check out the podcast channel in the eye above, including that interview with David Robertson. A brilliant guy, a good laugh, and a fantastic story about his time at Rao Kashmir too. So thank you very much for watching as always, supporting this channel and the podcast too. And I will see you next time for our first league games of the season and a return to Breakin City. <laughs> <laughs>